Hey, and welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be going over just real quick a uh, brief overview of how I actually did my Fusion 360 post for my Fanuc OM um, control. And I, mine's a little different than most. Um, I don't have like a PNC or I don't have tool change macros or anything like that. Uh, so most of the tool chain stuff I've actually added to post processing. Um, and then I've got uh, custom programs that I run when I actually put in um, uh, like the Heimer or something I'm going to measure with. I do the tool offset and work offset. And again, my machine is using a uh, gauge line setup. Uh, and, I, and a lot of people I know do not use that. Um, I, I use it just simply because I don't really want to touch off tools every time that I run the machine. Um, so I'm kind of going to kind of going to go through. Uh, I'm going to go into the HC control and just kind of show you what that's outputting and how I actually edited the post. Uh, so if you look here, this is the uh, HC control enclosure. You know, there's a lot of ops. This is a four op uh, design. It's a it's a aluminum enclosure. Um, I'm just going to generate this here. There we go. Okay, so if you look here, this is going to tell it to switch to a particular tool position. Uh, and this is tool 16, M06. Um, this basically makes it happen. If you notice down here, I'm actually going ahead and preloading uh, in my pot system tool 12. That way I don't have to wait on that pot to flip around. Uh, during the next tool change. So you'll notice the very next tool change down here is tool 12. Uh, so we're, we're, we're preloading that um, and that again that's all done in this uh, post processor. Um, and I pretty much did all of that under the tool setting. Um, if you look through these functions there's a ton of them. Uh, but it'll make a lot more sense once you look at it as you can see here this are different operations um, and it's going to write out a block and if you look here, this G uh, retract model, G ABS include modal, um, those are kind of hints to you know what G code it's actually inserting in there. There's a lot of examples you can actually download the other CPS files uh, and kind of see what other machines are doing. Um, so basically, what this is doing is loading the program, setting up all of the uh, generic parameters and then what we do on a tool output is we actually execute these custom commands for my control um, my particular control again I'm, I'm, a, I'm a gauge line uh, setup so I'm using G43 for my hot offsets as you can see here uh, one thing I'll mention about this G43 it's a good idea to actually give a default, um, and I added this in, in the post processor as well. Uh, on my particular machine, you, you have to give a, a Z value. If you do zero and you tell it not to move, it actually will not apply the offset. Uh, so I just do a, a bare minimum uh, Z move to get that offset loaded. Just to kind of give you an idea, this is a fairly large file, and you know one thing I'll say: uh, my machine's older. If you if you've not seen my prior videos, pretty much I've got videos on that machine. Uh, it was used. Um, that's kind of a scary thing for most folks to actually buy a used machine, figure out everything uh, from scratch. So I'm hoping some of these videos kind of give you some insight of, about how you might do that yourself, especially if you're buying an older machine. Uh, I've noticed a lot of the other YouTubers that maybe even have brand new machines are now considering getting a used machine. Uh, and when I say used, I don't mean from a dealer. I mean you know, on eBay or, or, or buying one from someone that doesn't actually know how to operate it. Um, they're not going to be able to really give you insight. And to be honest, um, even if they sit with you, you know, three or four days, if you've never used that control, um, you know, talking to someone that has used one is uh, invaluable in figuring it out. Luckily, mine came with a manual and uh, it had a particular tool change, uh, you know, programming that was actually listed in the manual. So I was able to copy that and figure that out. And like I said, I've been using this pretty much uh, 
I, at least for the past two years, I don't think I've really edited this file. And this has been working, you know, day in, day out. Uh, as far as the actual Fanuc OEM control, I had great luck with it. Really, the only things I've had to do with it uh, is the LCD upgrade. Machine-wise, um, you know, cleaning, um, had some air lines, uh, replaced the solenoid block. Um, I have since on that solenoid block, uh, you know, I've cross-referenced all the O-rings in it, and I've actually uh, rebuilt the old one. On an older machine, if you're willing to figure out, you know, how the controls work, where everything plugs in at, I think one of the big issues that I had when I first got the machine, and I mentioned this before, uh, one of the, the optical cable had actually jarred loose and uh, came out of the machine. So when I plugged it up, you know, I had all sorts of errors uh, about things not working. And, uh, you know, just took a big breath, um, really looked over the electronics in the machine and kind of started drawing all my own little diagrams on a napkin. And, you know, then I saw the optical cable sitting there, plugged it in, and lo and behold, everything works. But over time, uh, especially when I have free time, I have been kind of documenting more and more about the machine so I know about it. Not that it's giving me any trouble, but, you know, I'm sure it won't last forever if things break. And uh, it's a lot easier to debug or, or learn about something when it's working than when you just have a big piece of metal sitting there and it's not doing anything. Um, one thing I'll recommend if you're doing this, uh, if you're going to modify your post processor to work with another machine, let's say that you get Fusion and you try it and you see an issue or something that doesn't necessarily work in the machine, uh, I'll give you a good example. My machine, when I got it, was set up for an M66 tool change, which executed a macro uh, on the machine. Um, it's in the 9000 series. Normally the 9000, uh, you know, that's doing a lot of stuff with the tool changer. Mine does not have that. It's, it's kind of built in and the tool changer is automatic. However, uh, the tool offsets and everything were there in that M66. So I could have just done an M66 tool change and it would have almost worked out of the box. Uh, for me, me personally, I like seeing that in the program as it's generated. Uh, and I, you know, I know I'm familiar with M06, uh, so I prefer to use that method. But my machine will actually do either. Uh, I'll kind of just lay this out really quick for you. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of maybe where to look. And you know, it's just like anything else. Keep, in, keep the original file somewhere where you can get to it. And uh, you know, just start editing. And it, it'll either work or it won't. Especially if you're doing like tool changes, stuff that happens early in the program, that, that, that kind of works a lot easier to do because you can pretty much pop it in the machine and test it. Um, actually having issues with something like, you know, rigid tapping, maybe your machine needs something special for that. That's gets a little more complex. You know, you want to do a special um, you know, one op, uh, one tool change program just for that particular thing to debug that. And then once you get it debugged, you can run longer programs. Uh, but if you look here, you start seeing this is, a uh, you know, description equals. That's basically setting things. Some of the, some of the, you know, more stranger things where this is calling a, a you know, setting tolerance to a function. Um, so if you look for that, uh, that, that one may not be in there, it may be included, but the main functions you'll be able to see where they're being called. Um, so you can bounce through the text file and kind of find out where that's going. Uh, here are your user-defined properties. Most of these are clear-cut, uh, you know, right machine, right tools, preload tool. Um, I'm doing this preload tool. Um, and then you kind of get down here, and this is kind of what settings or what things that dynamically change you might be looking for. So this is going to tell you the name of what that may be and you can do a search. You know, again, I'm using Sublime, so if I, you know, we do a control F and we look for, um, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Um, tool, pretty simple. So basically we can scroll through this file and then see what might be referencing tool. Okay. Now this is uh, written by Autodesk, so we need the vendor of the control. But if you look up here, um, this is a fairly old one. Um, you can download a new one, and one tool that I recommend, um, I, a lot of times I'll use Sublime Merge, but almost every 
operating system windows uh, I think a good tool to use is called meld but you can actually diff these files um, so you basically take the old one and you take the new one um, and it'll line them up side by side and what you can do is you can look at the differences between the two files and you can move stuff right or left and a lot of times that'll just that'll work but sometimes you'll have to write some new stuff uh, to match up uh, but that's a way to upgrade your post processor to the latest version and basically take your old stuff uh, in a window and old. You can do it manually with two, two open text editors or you can use a fancy tool. I use Sublime Merge. Um, another tool we use would be like on Linux would be like GIF. I think they have GIF for, for Windows now. Um, and one, I think, uh, uh, multi platform tool is probably Meld. Uh, I use that quite a bit. But it's actually designed for doing graphical diffs. Uh, and diff means difference uh, for those for those of y'all that aren't programmers. But um, anyway, I hope this helps some folks out. If you have any questions about this, drop me a line. You know, obviously I can't I can't write your post processor for you, but I could probably answer uh, a question or two if you're trying to do this yourself, especially if it's uh you know on a Fanuco M or AT uh, or one of the older Fanucs. I have uh, quite a bit of experience with that at this point. Um, but I like seeing these machines continue to get used. Anyone out there that has a machine at home that's doing this uh, as a hobby, uh, I'd be interested in hearing from you on uh, your experiences. If, if anybody else has these, uh, these old, one of these older machines, maybe they brought back to life or just purchased and, and figured out on their own. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.